Hey friend, Brandon here. A new leak has come out from Pic2, and this time it's for the Google Pixel 5 XL. And based upon what this leak says, I have unknowingly had parts of the Google Pixel 5 XL this whole time. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? This video is sponsored in part by Raycon and their everyday E25 earbuds. Click the link in the description below to get 15% off your order or go to buyraycon.com slash thisistechtoday. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. I'd really appreciate it. So if you watched my last video, it was about the Google Pixel 5 leak that came out from Pic2. I actually talked a little bit about how there were some doubts between journalists and some other leakers. So first of all, these CAD renders come out. And when these CAD renders come out, they're, they're given to like case manufacturers and things like that, and they make their cases based upon that. The CAD renders don't provide every single little detail about the phone. It does give some general context, at least in terms of its physical size and maybe some of the ports and things like that. But what's interesting about this particular leak is that it tells us about what processor is inside. And it says that there's a Snapdragon 865 in it, but every single thing that has leaked out for months on end have pointed towards a 765 processor. I've actually talked about this at length in a previous video if you want to check it out up here, but I'm not buying this whole Snapdragon 865 processor thing. Plus the price of that processor is really high. So if Google used that processor, that would probably mean that the Google Pixel 5 is closer to $1,000, which seems to contradict the survey that came out saying that it was aiming for about $700. A lot of things are contradicting that, but let's continue. If you also look at the renders, they look up top. W what do you see? I see a headphone jack. So how many generations have we had with our headphone jack? We've had the Pixel 3 and we've had the Pixel 4. So why would uh, Google go the other direction and add a headphone jack back, especially when you have something like the uh, Google Pixel Buds? By the way, I really wanna make a review on this, especially a long-term one, but I'm waiting for that software update that's supposed to come out that's supposed to fix some of the issues, but I don't know where it is. I'd rather review this based upon you know the fixes that they're planning on doing, but maybe I'll just do a long-term review before then. Leave a comment below and let me know. What's most interesting and, and helpful, in my opinion, about this whole Pixel 5 XL leak from Pig2 are the dimensions listed. Now, in my previous video where I went over the Pixel 5, not the XL leak, I went over some of the dimensions that are listed there and I kind of wanted to find out whether or not this Pixel 5 leak was being mistaken for a Pixel 4 XL shell. When I measured it, well, it, it didn't line up, so that theory was debunked. Interestingly though, when you look at the dimensions listed on the Pixel 5 XL leak, those dimensions conveniently line up with the Pixel 4 A XL shell dimensions. Let me show you. So here I have the Pixel 4 A XL L, at least the shell that I bought off of eBay, and uh, this was canceled. If you look at the, the size of this here, it's just a little bit taller than six inches. And then here are the dimensions listed on the website for the Google Pixel 5 XL. Okay, and here is the width of the device right here. Now, here's what Pig2 says in their leak about its width. Hmm, convenient, huh? Uh, but let's continue and uh, look at this a little bit more. If we look at the render that was provided on their website, there's uh, uh, quite a few similarities with this shell here. First of all, you have your flash up top, only two cameras, you have a fingerprint scanner right there, <gasps> and that headphone jack right there. There's even a SIM card tray along the side, and then the speaker hole and USB-C port or hole. And just for funsies, if you want to see what the inside is, uh, here it is. I imagine this is where the motherboard would have gone. And uh, you have room for the battery right here. So for the past few months, have I had a part of the Pixel 5 XL this whole time and not realized it? Uh, no. <laughs> I haven't, but here's what we think is happening, which is very interesting. You see, the leaks are wrong, but they're right? I do have to give credit where it's due. Stephen Hall over at 95 Google did the mental legwork on this, but the leaks are of the actual Google Pixel devices that Google is working on. There's enough evidence, context, and confirmation from a variety of sources beyond journalists that are confirming that these leaks are based off of actual Google Pixel phones that are planned to launch. So if the leaks are right, what is wrong with them? It all comes down to the names. We know what the Pixel 4a is and what it looks 
Firefly quite thoroughly, but the other leaks seem to have their names confused. And since some of the leaks are coming from a case manufacturer, some of the specs and specifics are not quite right. You see, the Pixel 5 XL leak is not the Pixel 5 XL, but the Pixel 4a 5G. There are a few reasons for this. First, code exists that have been pointed to a device internally named as Bramble. This uses the Snapdragon 765G chip, which has 5G on it. Months ago, I actually made a video going through all the code names that leaked out, and if you want more context on all of this, there's a link in the description and a card up there. What is interesting is the lack of a Pixel 5 XL within the leaks in code. Second, it has a headphone jack, which I touched on earlier in the video, but a headphone jack in Google's lineup is only found in their budget range and not their flagship tier so far. That means the original Pixel 5 leak that I talked about in my previous video that I wasn't quite sure about is likely more right than wrong. Google seems to be aiming for a consistent design language across all their devices, but removes a headphone jack from this model. So what would make the Pixel 5 worthy of a higher number and the title of Google's flagship? If I were to guess, it makes sense that I would have a higher build quality compared to the Pixel 4a, wireless charging, that reverse wireless charging battery share feature that you see on a lot of Samsung devices, a higher quality screen and refresh rate, and of course, 5G. Now, interestingly enough, the Pixel 5 appears to be using the same Snapdragon 765G chip as the Pixel 4a 5G. So this seems really confusing to think of at first, but in context, it actually makes a lot of sense. So Onlix received some information before that he just wasn't sure about, but he put out this image to add to the conversation that we're all having. Within this image, it has four devices and their dimensions. So perhaps the shell I have is indeed what a Pixel 4a XL would have been before it was canceled, or it's actually a Pixel 4a 5G. They're nearly the same in size. But from left to right, you can see that it has a Pixel 4a with one camera, a Pixel 5, which has two cameras, and then on the right, two devices, one of which is a Pixel 4a 5G, which also has two cameras, and the other a canceled 4a XL. That's a huge bummer that there's only two cameras and not three. I, I really want an ultra wide camera. Now, interestingly enough, the Pixel 5 will be smaller than the Pixel 4a 5G, but this isn't unusual. The iPhone 11 Pro is smaller than the lower price iPhone 11. And from what we can tell, if you want the best battery life option within this lineup, it just may be the Pixel 4a 5G. It'll likely have a larger battery with a lower resolution screen and refresh rate. But what I'm seeing here is a really affordable suite of devices ranging from a rumored price of $300 up to $700. David from Android Police laid it out well, showing that Google is providing access to 5G devices at a far more affordable price than other phone manufacturers. This could benefit the carriers quite a bit as they seek to move customers over to the 5G network offerings. This is important for carriers as they seek to please shareholders, but also move people off their older network technologies like 4G, which will provide them with additional cost savings in a variety of ways and in turn, please shareholders. Once again, it's like Google is switching spots with OnePlus going for a more affordable price, uh, at least until OnePlus Nord comes on the scene. We'll find out how that turns out. Whether or not the price will be enough to convince a large majority of average consumers to buy a Google Pixel device is up in the air. Can they earn the rep and then build up from there? <laughs> I'm a poet and I didn't know it. <laughs> As I've said many times before, the light to dollar ratio matters. It's what made the Pixel 3a an amazing phone as I felt like I got way more than what I paid for. Even my dad bought the phone and said that he loves it. I had no idea that he bought it and he doesn't even know that I make videos talking about Google Pixel phones. He agreed that it has an incredible delight to dollar ratio when I explained the concept to him. And in today's economic climate, I anticipate price will become more and more important. Whether or not people buy something other than Apple or Samsung will be the biggest hurdle. So hopefully it does well because it would be a shame to see the Google Pixel end. But you know what's not a shame? This video is sponsored. Raycon and their everyday E25 earbuds, which come at about half the price of other premium wireless earbuds. And you can get them for an even greater price of 15% off by clicking the link in the description. Raycon was founded by Ray J and celebrities like Snoop Dogg are obsessed with them. They look great, fit great with a variety of colors and patterns to fit your style and no dangling wires or funny looking stems. So they look compact, discreet, and stylish. They're a great option for video calls while working from home, working out, or listening to music and podcasts without distracting those you live with. They even have a great noise isolating fit so you don't hear everyone else either. Being that the Everyday E25s are Raycon's greatest model yet, they last for up to six hours of playtime with an additional four full charges available from the case to get you through your day with a reliable and seamless Bluetooth pairing and some deep bass and sound as good as many of the top brands out there at a much more affordable price. Don't miss out on your opportunity to get them at their great price with an additional 15% off by clicking the link in the description or going to buyraycon.com slash thisistech today. Thank you Raycon for sponsoring this portion of the video so I can continue to make content for you for free. So what do you think about all these crazy leaks? Do you actually believe them? And what do you even want from Google this year? What do you expect? What do you hope that they get rid of or add? I, I'm just curious. Leave a comment down below and make sure you join the This Is Tech Today community Discord chat server. We'd love to have you. By the way, I'm now streaming live on Twitch. Thank you for watching This Is Tech Today, where we talk about the intersection of technology in our everyday lives, in business, and in all things creative. Until next time.